Hi, Fred B. here, and in this video I'm going to present a trigonometric derivation of the dodecahedron angle. I recently got interested in CAD design and wanted to work with dodecahedrons. So I went and looked up some how to build a dodecahedron tutorials. In those tutorials, there's I found at least two ways to construct a dodecahedron in CAD, and one of those ways uses a 116 point something degree angle, and the other way uses a 26 point something degree angle. And those tutorials present those figures without explaining where they came from. So I was interested in how they derived those figures. So I tried to look up a derivation of the dodecahedron angle, and I had trouble finding anything on it. So I decided to make this video. In order to work this derivation, we need to cover some groundwork on the nature of a pentagon. The first thing we know about a pentagon is that it's a regular polygon, meaning that all of these sides and all of these angles are all the same. Now the numerical value of any given side doesn't really matter for this derivation, so we'll just use a placeholder as L. To begin our exploration of the nature of a pentagon, we know that 360 divided by 5 is 72, and all of these, if you draw a line, mark up 72 degrees, and then draw a line and mark off 72 degrees five times, you'll end up with a pentagon. The 180 degree complement of 72 is 108 degrees. This is what we really want to know, this interior angle here, to start with. And to continue our exploration, if we drop a vertical line, or draw a vertical line up here to this apex, we know our, from basic trigonometry that our, this other angle is going to be the 90 degree complement of 72. So that'll be 18 degrees. And we're going to use this, a similar triangle to this, later. So we need to figure out a little more information about this. If we isolate that triangle, we know these two angles. We know all three angles. This one's, of course, 90. And we know the length of this side, side is going to be L. So with this information, we can figure out the length of this side here. And that's going to be L cosine 18. I'm going to avoid explaining the basic trig of how I got that and just move on. Now, a little more exploration. If we drop a vertical from this apex, 90 degrees here, we know this will bisect that 108 degree angle, and that'll give us 54 for this angle. And if we draw another line, 90 degrees to the first one, out to this apex, we know this angle here is going to be the 90 degree complement to 54, and that gives us 36. This is our second triangle of interest, so if we isolate this, and we know all of the angles, and this side, using this information we can figure out this side, and that's going to be L cosine 36. That covers our groundwork. Now we can start our derivation. In the derivation we're going to use three pentagons, we're going to start with two, put side to side like this. We can extend this line out and make a 90 degrees and come over to this vertex. Now this triangle here is same as our first triangle we explored, so we know that this side here is L cosine 18. And if we take this and flip it on its side, it'll look like this. And we know that between the center dot and one of the side dots, the length is going to be L cosine 18. Now what we're going to want to do is bend these around this axis, this side to come down, this side to come down. And when we do that, the important thing to notice is that the distance between the two dots is going to remain constant at L cosine 18. Our third pentagram, pentagon rather, 
brings us to the only subtle part of this derivation and we're going to tilt this on this axis and when we tilt it we'll no longer be we'll stop looking at the pentagon directly and we'll be looking at a projection of the tilted pentagram pentagon I keep calling it a pentagram <clears throat> the tilted pentagon on the screen and the important thing to see here is that this horizontal distance is going to remain the same when we tilt it so this is what it looks like when we tilt it over the bottom is coming out towards us and the, in, the top is going in away from the screen and this remains constant all right so putting it all together we have the two pentagons on top joined at their apex to this third one which presently is parallel to the screen we can consider these top two to be perpendicular to the screen. And when we bend these down and tilt this one, top in, the bottom out, so that all of these vertices here meet, we get this. Now this is our area of interest here, this tr triangle, which is a projection triangle, because the ain't. This is the only dimension that has stayed the same. This dimension and this dimension, these two, have stayed the same. This angle has changed, this angle has changed, and this dimension has changed when we tilted the pentagon. So if we isolate this triangle and recognize the information that we already know about it, this length is L cosine 36, this length is L cosine 18, we want to figure out what this angle here is, and we know from our basic trig that the sine of this angle is going to be L cosine 36 divided by L cosine 18. Call this theta. So sine theta equals that figure. This can be simplified because the L's will cancel out, leaving us with sine theta equals cosine 36 over cosine 18. Now, in order to figure out the numerical value of this angle, we need to employ the arc sine function. So theta will equal arc sine cosine 36 over cosine 18. This angle turns out to be only half of what the angle we want to, the full angle we want to know. So we just multiply that half angle by 2. 2 arc sine cosine 36 by cosine 18. And this is the formula that we wanted to derive. When we evaluate this formula, we get our 116 point something figure that's used in the CAD tutorials. This is one of the figures. And I find this formula easier to remember than trying to memorize, you know, 10-digit number. The other figure used in the CAD tutorials is this angle here, which is if we turn our two pentagon angle so that one is parallel to the bottom plane and draw a 90 degree angle here. What's left over is our 116 minus 90. And this is our 26 point something degree angle. This is the extrusion angle they use for creating pentagons, dodecahedrons rather, in the second method. So there we are. Here are the two values and their derivation for the dodecahedron angles. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, tips are welcome via PayPal, and thanks for watching.